Okay, so I'm talking about how to solve these absolute value equations. And uh, I want to go back to a simpler problem, then we'll, we'll come back to this one, this negative 2 um, absolute value of x plus 3 minus 4 is equal to 0, okay? Um, which should have no solution, right? We, we just saw what the graph of that looked like. It, it shouldn't ever intersect the x-axis. Okay, so here, but I want to talk about a simpler problem. And that problem is, how do you solve the absolute value of x is equal to 3? Okay, and really this idea goes back to remembering what absolute value means. It's a measure of distance on the real line, right? So I have this real number line. 0, 1, 2, 3. And when I say the absolute value of x is equal to 3, I mean the distance from x to 0 is 3 units. So, and I can easily find the values that meet that criteria, right? It's here, 3, and minus 3. Both have a distance of 3. Okay, so solutions to this equation are x equal to negative 3 and x equal to positive 3. I get kind of these plus and minuses of whatever I saw on the right-hand side, okay? So you can imagine when I go to maybe a slightly uh, more complicated problem, absolute value of x plus 2 is equal to 5. I want x plus 2 to be 5. That means uh, the distance from x plus 2 is either negative 5, it's either that, or x plus 2 is positive 5. Okay, I get these two splittings. Um, once I have, again, this absolute value all by itself on the left-hand side of this equation, and then you can solve. x can be negative 7, or x can be 3. And if you plug in 3 there, you'll get a correct solution. If you plug in negative 7, you get a correct solution. Okay? Okay, I want to look at the graph of this, so let me lay down some lines and I'll, and I'll draw kind of this graph. So you can see what it looks like. This is a graph. This left side is the absolute value function that's been shifted to the left by 2. Otherwise, it's going, has the exact same shape that I have for the base graph. Okay, and then this side. up in these increments of 1 as well. Okay, now the right side of this graph is the equation 5, just y equals 5, so I'll graph that. That's a horizontal line. And you see these two points of intersection at negative 7 and at 3. And those are the points where you're seeing the y values, the output values, be the same for both these red and blue lines. Let's do another problem. So sometimes you'll see this absolute value of x plus 5 is equal to negative 3. This never happens, right? Uh, this is a graph that's been shifted left by 5, and, but the vertex is still at negative 5, 0. 
That's my lowest point, right? And then negative 3 is way below that. This has no solution. There's no way for to get positive value here equal to a negative value on the right. Okay? Uh, let's do one slightly more complex solution so that you can see. I want to do this x squared plus x absolute value is equal to 12. Okay? Now here, I just want to say this out loud. These will not have the same characteristic V shape that we have seen because I have a very, I have a much more complicated um, function inside this graph. Okay, so this graph will look first like x squared plus x and then everything will be made positive on the left. Um, so that um, kind of thing changes or radically changes the graph and isn't something we talked about with those transformations. Now I can still use this algebraic technique of setting this equal to negative 12 and x squared plus x equal to positive 12 and solving those two equations, okay? So x squared plus x plus 12 is equal to 0 and x squared plus x minus 12 is equal to 0, okay? So let's go through. There are two separate equations. Let me solve them. This one here, I try to factor and I, I want it to be kind of 4 and 3, but, but there's no negative sign there. So let me try the quadratic formula. b squared minus 4ac over 2a. b is 1. 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 12. And already it looks, I think, like I'm going to get complex solutions out of this. 1 minus 4 times 12 is I get negative 47. So I think I get x is negative 1 plus or minus i square roots of 47 over 2 for the two solutions. And then I come over here. This one is the factorable one. I think I get x plus 4 and x minus 3 here. So x is equal to negative 4, and x is equal to 3. Okay? Okay, so this is how to solve absolute value equations, or equations that arrive from finding x-intercepts. And there are graphical methods to do this, or you should be able to verify this graphically, or put these points of intersections on a graph as well. Um, and we'll talk more about kind of that combination of graphing also with these, um, uh, with the inequalities we'll see in the next portion of this.